pick up where he left off, close to shore. Here, river water meets the ocean, a mix of nutrients for marine life. Ready, Henry? Yes, sir. Ready? It's in 10 minutes, yes? Yes. yes. Good. Good to go. meters and you think it's okay and all of a sudden it's like a sandstorm in the Sahara Desert you know you just disappear and you can't see your hand in front of your face but even in the darkness they're tantalized by a familiar song while we were diving we heard the calls of humpback whales we did not see them, but we could hear them. This visibility. Dark, dark, dark. Six meters before we reached the bottom, there was a cloud of mud. Visibility was so bad that we could barely see each other. The team pulls away to hunt down clearer waters when the horizon erupts. This coast is one of the largest population of humpbacks in the Southern Hemisphere. More than a thousand linger through peak season. They're here to breed. Their calves will nurse for up to a year, even during the long months ahead, migrating south. We've got a bunch of residual females with babies here, so that's what we're going after today. So they're just kind of getting used to their babies and seeing if the babies are going to be able to make it back to the Antarctic for the for the summertime. Oh my gosh! Okay. Wow! Here they go! The whales head out toward the team's number one dive site. Oil is 75% of Gabon's export revenue. The country's got two billion barrels of reserves and dozens of platforms up and down its coast. Each one presents an intriguing mystery. We have no scientific information whatsoever about these places. We are going to do the first underwater exploration and scientific studies of these platforms. This is real exploration. This is groundbreaking. This is what we live for. This is a dangerous place to dive. I have to admit that I'm a little nervous. There's a huge flare. It looks pretty scary, like a, kind of a Mad Max world. An industrial site is an undersea obstacle course. There's a lot of overhanging structures, there's pipes, wires, it's noisy. Um, so, you know, you really have to be on guard and be extremely cautious and, and aware of your surroundings when you're, when you're out there working. Wait, wait, wait. All right, guys, okay. we're neutral. Have a good day. Thank you. Okay, go in the water. Be safe. Hello. alive. In the open ocean, any surface is an opportunity. These platforms have big pilings that go to the seafloor. So all these fish that love reefs and all these migratory species like tuna or jacks and some sharks, they might be concentrating there. Coral polyps aren't picky. They cling to every centimeter. And wherever they bloom, fish follow. A mysterious lion's mane jellyfish, the largest of all jellies. And a slipper lobster, 
only one of two types without any claws. It's a good sign for the team. On the near the flame, there was this big snapper as big as he can. That's pretty impressive. Lots of little wrasses and damselfish, and it's just a magnet for everything, so. For Mike, a powerful idea returns. Think about if you protected that rig for five years. It would be crazy. That's great. That's great news. It seems like the last place on Earth where a conservationist would hang his hopes. Everybody sees the oil companies as the bad guys. What an unlikely partner for conservation. Why would an oil company help make a marine sanctuary? The answer lies on the sea floor. A grim discovery. Could what killed this turtle be the bane of Gabon's waters? I thought I saw a net on it. Not the oil industry, illegal fishing. Look at a big old leatherback turtle. And this thing probably got caught in a fishing net, and uh, they drowned because they need to breathe air. Another side benefit of illegal fishing. Normally, this is turtle heaven, home to the world's largest population of leatherbacks. Females come here by the tens of thousands, all with a single goal, to lay their eggs. They've spent years traveling the open ocean, but the shoreline is the hardest part. Gabon has one of the most important nesting habitats for leatherback turtles anywhere on Earth. Uh, these are very long-lived animals, anywhere from 30 to 50 years. They rarely touch land, but when they do, it's really critical for their populations because that's where they reproduce. 10 or more weeks later, each nest's hatchlings storm the beach. 80 on average, only one in a thousand will live to adulthood. But they may not have the same beach to come back to. Logging, like fishing, is big business around here. The downside is strewn up and down the shoreline. For years and years, um, loggers transported all of their logs on rivers, and a certain percentage of those logs got away. The losers are the leatherbacks. A nesting mother faces an obstacle course, or worse, no beach at all. The logs in the surf grind away at the sands. In that period between the day that one's born and the day he comes back, that beach habitat is still going to be there when the, this one turtle comes back. And that's the way humans have to start thinking. If you want natural systems to exist, you got to think on that time scale and you got to start managing things so that they do stick around for generations. Just as deadly are those nets. European and Chinese trawlers comb these waters for fish and all too often, whatever marine life they cross. Turtles have kind of given us that light bulb that goes on. We've got to control the trawler boats, make sure the, that beach habitat is there, but also the ocean habitat is there. Otherwise, we are going to have no turtles left. Worldwide, trawlers ravaged the seas dragging massive nets in their wake. In many countries, the fish stocks have already crashed, thanks in part to the trawlers. So now, they're in Gabon's waters. They scour the ocean from seafloor to surface. So much is taken so fast that species can't recover. We've lost a lot of the reproductive capacity of the fish populations and crustaceans and all kinds of sea life. This can't go on. This is insane. These guys are, are just killing this place. 
that's clear night after night at the local fish market. But Mike's got hope. Most people come to Africa and they think it's like chaotic and they talk about corruption and they talk about warfare and how nothing works and all the systems are broken down. But, you know, I've been here for 30 some years and this is where I've spent most of my life. This place still has huge opportunity for conservation. You know, if we can get in here now, before we get to the point where there's nothing left, then, then we're really ahead of the game, you know? And so, here I am. <laughs> Mike's solution is an unexpected alliance. Conservationists and the oil industry both want the fishing trawlers gone. And Mike's political allies in the government are taking note. They have this huge infrastructure of pipes on the ocean floor, and their worst nightmare is trawler boats plying the sea in between their rigs because all it has to do is hit that one pipe, and all of a sudden they have a huge oil spill on their hands. Keeping those destructive fishing nets away is one big reason why oil platforms have such thriving reefs underneath them. Another platform, farther up the coast. The hope is the team will see a coral reef that's even richer, complete with big predators, like barracudas or sharks. I want to know if these platforms have the entire marine ecosystem, from the small fish to the top predators. Cameras are ready to roll to help make their case. Good, good to go. Information is powerful. Then at the same time, you want to be able to visualize those things. And so that's where filmmaking comes into play. You know, you, you want people to be able to dive below the water and, and see what they have in this country. And, and no one does that physically. And so bringing them there through film is hugely important. This site is spectacular and healthy. Rainbow runners swirl the area by the thousands. Barracuda mingle. And a giant school of bullet tuna flows by. That was the best place. There was, there was a river of tuna. Bonita, a river. Just, and then on top, there were all the big barracudas just hovering. The best. Incredible. The best dive so far. Everything was perfect. Time to tackle the ultimate dive. In this field, Four oil platforms are linked by over nine kilometers of pipes to one megastation. A site this large could harbor some amazing finds. We're heading on to a super tanker. Welcome to the mothership. Getting aboard a 140,000 ton behemoth ship is gonna be tricky. Diving under one could be deadly. So we're going to have our little uh, kind of orientation meeting. Oh, c'est bon. It's like climbing uh, redwood trees. The Petroleo Nautipa is a retrofitted super tanker used as an oil platform. It's sitting on a reserve of over 20 million barrels of oil, pumping out over 20,000 barrels a day. But the number the team's after is a count of the marine life the hull attracts. We're going to dive on the side of a big oil tanker. It's about 250 meters long. And it's the first time we've dived such a huge ship. And we have no idea what we're going to find. The boat has been there for 10 years. So probably there is uh, quite a, a biological growth. There might be a reef underneath. 
Mike's got to get special permission to dive here. It's dangerous, and the oil company reps are worried about an accident. Bonjour, Mike. Comment allez-vous? A diver could get sucked into one of the ship's massive water intakes. Uh, we will at least have five divers in the water. Mm -hmm. Maybe a team of three and a team of two. Yeah. Are we saying that the only place we'll dive is is the bow there? So we can the dive base. from the crane oh, okay, base. from the crane base back, the and then we. There's the also the section. risk of okay. getting slammed by the ship okay. as it rocks. Right. But exploring this site okay. is irresistible. The oil company agrees, and they give their permission. Remember, keep the sunlight on your right. All right, let's go. Maybe the speedy one. All right, let's go. It was pretty creepy when you went down below. Oh, yes, it it got yeah, and it also got really dark. <laughs> very dark, very quickly. In fact, the murkier the water, the better. Those sediments are from nutrients being flushed into the sea. The hull was fully covered with algae, corals, barnacles, and outside, there was a school of jacks and barracudas, huge, the largest we've seen. These are rich currents. The cause is 300 kilometers south. The lifeblood of this coast is the Congo River. Where it meets the ocean, Gabon's animals are living large. Some really big ones roam the coastline. And it's one of the only places where hippos surf the waves. People always think about the coastline as, OK, here's the land and here's the sea. But there's all kinds of things that are connected between those two things. We've got things like hippopotamus, which reside in land, but are also found in the estuaries and even out in the surf. So um, you know, a lot of these animals, they, they bridge the gap between the land and the sea. Runoff from the rainforest spills into Gabon's rivers up and down the coast. Fresh water meets salt, a perfect cocktail for mangrove swamps to swell. We've got one of the largest influxes of fresh water coming into the ocean here of any place on Earth. The African manatee ranges among Gabon seagrasses. It's rare and considered vulnerable. The coves shelter spawning fish, too. Lagoons this lush are prime nurseries for the ocean beyond. Humpback dolphins swim nearby, ready to feast on the young fish. Protecting Gabon's forests is rejuvenating its seas. Protecting its seas, though, is a challenge. You know, you think, God, what are we going to find in these oil rigs? And boom, you know, there's thousands and thousands of fish circling around these rigs. And who would have thunk, you know, that, that it would be on oil rigs? The oil industry guards its infrastructure from trawlers. That's a big reason this undersea Eden hasn't been fished into oblivion. The team gets a jarring reminder of that. This guy's alone. It's a trawler looking for trouble. Sea's already heading out. A fishing boat caught near waters set aside as a coastal preserve. Nice looking boat, eh? <laughs> and true to form, going straight out to sea. They know farther out is less illegal. So this is a Chinese fishing boat fishing off the coast of Luongo National Park. It's probably registered legally in Gabon, but they usually fish illegally. There's a three nautical mile limit. These guys are fishing it at about five nautical miles. 
But as soon as nightfall hits, they head in and they start fishing the inlets. Mike's seen this before. He calls in the big guns. The Bones Navy intercepts illegal trawlers. With Mike's help, they're getting the message across. If you're going to really kind of start managing the marine environment, fewer adults. Oh. Mike can barely contain what? his frustration. Baby sharks, baby sharks, baby barracudas. They, they scoop up everything. They just kill everything. So there's thousands and thousands of baby sharks in this boat. It's crazy. Catching baby fish isn't illegal for now. Three tons of big. But Mike finds something that is. Shrimp. And they don't have a license to fish for shrimp. I mean, they don't have a license to kill, but all these shrimp um, show that these guys just fish completely illegally. But even as this raid is underway, another is suddenly launched. The Navy gets a new alert. We get a call from the last countries that has fish. Now everybody wants to fish here. While the team's been focusing on Gabon's platforms and reefs, it's time to shift to the sea floor. They've only got a few days left on the boat. To assess the health of the deep, they'll need to take a page from the past, a vintage map they found charting the lay of the land underwater. But what they discover isn't on any map. We got it. We found the volcano. It's going to erupt with surprises. It's not likely anyone has glimpsed Gabon's depths until now. The boat has this ROV, you know, this remote operated vehicle that you can actually, um, you know, operate from a video screen inside the boat. And that allows us to get down to 100, 150 meters and really start exploring places that the divers just can't go. It can dive over half a kilometer down, transmit what it sees, and it's rigged with robotics to snap up any finds. Enrique's looking for the top predator. The employees of the oil companies tell us that there are sharks here, including tiger sharks. Yesterday we saw lots of fish, but so far we have not seen sharks. The sharks are key. They are one of the surest signs the ocean here is healthy. Even though the place is full of large fish, I still want to see the shark. Now, though, the team's just looking for signs of life. A sandy bottom sure looks like a lost cause. But they still have to pick up a sample. Any collection could turn into a new discovery. With the ROV, we found a shell at 50 meters depth. And inside the shell, there was an octopus. Wow. That's not all. Oh, wow. Oh, they all came out. Oh, my God. Okay. Look at them all coming out. Baby octopus hatching by the thousands. Look, they're still coming out. Octopus like this size. They're little baby octopus. Look at that, they keep coming. <laughs> An octopus can lay up to a half a million eggs. If there's no rock or reef to hide them, a shell will do. Soon after they hatch, the mother dies. The octopus using this shell is just a great example of how life uses every opportunity to thrive. After three weeks, this is the last day of the expedition. 100 meters. Yeah, no, the top is at 100. Local fishermen told the team there's an uprising in the seafloor. They call it the volcano. And it's supposedly erupting with fish. See these clouds of fish 25 meters up in the water column on top of the volcano. So this looks very promising. Just the spot for the team to land their ROV. We just dropped anchor on top of the volcano, 100 meters depth. And we're going to deploy the remote operated vehicle. This volcano is not even on the charts. And this is the very first time that human eyes are going to see what's down there.
all eyes are glued to the monitors. Shark. Silk shark. Wow. Oh, no, these are the, the, the six amberjacks. Five amberjacks and one shark. That's cool. It's the first shark the team has seen, and it leads them straight to a site beyond expectations. A rocky shoal, rich with life. It's amazing how as soon as there's a rock, everything comes alive. That is insane. It is amazing. We found some rocks in the middle of the mud, and there is some rocks and some relief, and bang, life explodes. There are huge groupers, maybe a meter and a half long, so at least two. Big jacks, scorpion fish. It's full of sea lilies. It's unbelievable. You can just hit the jackpot, you know? And that means now we can continue to look on this plateau. But as soon as you find one spot like this, the probability of us happening upon the only place like this in the whole plateau is basically zero. In 2002, Mike Fay convinced the president of Gabon, Omar Bongo Ondimba, to create a system of national parks for his country. Now his son is here, President Ali Bongo Ondimba, to take up the same question with Gabon Seas. The president brought along Mike's friend, Lee White, head of the national parks. It's the opportunity the team's been hoping for. Enrique and Mike, the stakes couldn't be higher. D'accord, merci, Monsieur le Président, Madame, Lee, Madame. But when you look at uh, Gabon, there you have 200 miles, 200 nautical miles, which is 360 kilometers of ocean. And there is a diversity of ecosystems and the uh, richness of the deep reefs and the oil platforms is unparalleled. There is nothing like this in all of uh, Africa. And these platforms, you know, it did seem surreal for me that seeing with the president way out in the ocean, you know, it's kind of like, wow. And then when we start showing him all the stuff we've been finding over the month at sea, it was amazing. Since 2003, I've been hoping that Gabon and the president of Gabon would decide that, yeah, we need to manage fisheries. We need to create marine protected areas. And without that kind of decision, without that leadership, everything else downstream is difficult to make happen. For the president, the decision is a delicate balance of the country's needs. Uh, replacement pilot. <laughs> Sit down, sir, please. Nah, if I crash it down. No problem. We have insurance. Insurance? <laughs> but first, a little exploration. We want the president to kind of have his hand at driving to the ROV to give him some, you know, just hands-on experiences to see what kind of life's down there, you know? He's driving this thing around with the joystick, and we find a ledge, and he goes over the ledge. Wow. Cooper. We see a grouper, and then we see another grouper, and then we see like 10 groupers and all this fish life. And it was amazing, because it was, it was crystal clear water. And it was the kind of thing that you only dream about seeing. Wow, look at that one. Their luck could not have been better. Sure enough, we find it. And sure enough, the president happens to be the one driving the ROV when, when we find it. No, but franchement, c'est la vérité. On ne s'attendait pas à ça. Fou, ça. You should have come before, Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best spot we've seen with the ROV. Yeah. Epic. Epic. We've been looking for Epic, and there it is. Then Mike hears the bold decision he's waited for. Yeah, our job is just cut out for us, you know. 
Oh, really? Ten years ago, we started, you know, with the, with the rainforest. And now... This is the next logical step, huh? That's the next, the next step, you know. After seeing what he saw, he was absolutely convinced. He was completely blown away by what he saw. Yeah, you want the people want to be able to enjoy and see this, you know, so... Uh... He's like, yeah, we're in. We're going to do this. It's time. We're going to do it. And I was like, all right, right on. I'll stay. I'll do it with you. Merci. Wow. Enchanté. expedition is complete, and the president has made a crucial decision. President Bongo is committed to protecting Gabon's waters. The, the good old days um, from fishing free-for-all point of view are gone. Bond could be the first.